Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are looking at AQA, A-level chemistry, inorganic chemistry, part one. So the focus of today is periodic periodicity, great start, <laughs> group two metals and group seven halogens. So this isn't too long of a video, or at least it shouldn't be. Um, but before we jump, to, jump into it, I'd really appreciate it if you guys subscribed. Obviously, you'll be then notified for any further chemistry videos in future, or, you know, I have other... A-level videos, so I have psychology and sociology at the moment on my channel. And yeah, uh, feel free to like the video and comment below if you have any questions at all, and either myself or your fellow students will get to it. So firstly, looking at periodicity. So the periodic table arranges the known elements according to proton number. Elements along a period have the same number of, number of electron shells, and all elements down a group have the same number of outer electrons, which is indicated by the group number. So, for example, in group one, there is one electron in the outer shell. Periodicity is the study of the trends within the periodic table. So here I've just created a little table for, at, at, oh my god, I can't speak today, atomic radius and ionisation energy. So how these trend along a period and down a group. So... Firstly, looking at atomic radius, so this decreases along a period, so going horizontally across the periodic table um, due to increased nuclear charge. The outer electrons are pulled in closer to the nucleus as the increased charge um, produces a greater at attraction. And then down the group, uh, atomic radius increases, uh, so an electron shell is added with each increment down, um, increasing the distance between outer electrons and nucleus reducing the power of attraction. More shells increases shielding. Now for ionization energy. So along a period, this increases, so decreasing atomic radius and increasing nuclear charge means outer electrons are held more strongly. But then down a group, this decreases because nuclear attraction reduces and increasing shielding means less energy is required. So you can kind of see how these different blocks work in the uh, periodic table, which we'll kind of discuss a little bit more throughout the entirety of chemistry A-level, basically. Um, but looking directly at period three, um, so sodium, magnesium, and aluminium are all metals with metallic bonding. And so melting point, when it says something like MP, that means melting point, or BP is um, boiling point. So melting point increases due to greater positive charged ions. More electrons are released as free electrons. Silicon is macromolecular, meaning it has a very strong covalent structure, which requires a lot of energy to break. Phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine are simple co covalent molecules held with van der Waals forces, which are the weakest type of force. And argon is a noble gas that exists as individual atoms with a full outer shell, so it's very stable, and the van der Waals between them are very weak, but ex so exists as a gas at room temperature. And you can kind of see in the little table at the bottom, the little graph, that you can see the relationship between melting point and period, period three elements as you go along the period. Now, looking at group two metals, so atomic radius increases down the group due to additional electron shells. Reactivity, so increased electron shielding down the group makes the outer electrons easier to lose. So reactivity increases down the group. Uh, ionization energy decreases down the group due to greater atomic radius and increased amounts of shielding and melting points. So group two metals are metallic, so the larger the ions, the weaker the attractive forces as it has to act over a greater distance. So melting point decreases down the group. When it comes to group two metals reacting with water, so these react with water in a redox reaction to produce metal hydroxide and hydrogen. The metal hydroxide forms an forms as an alkaline solution and the one tip to speed up reaction is that you can use steam rather than water um, because obviously steam is water vapor it the atoms have more energy so reaction is more likely then solubility of hydroxide so the hydroxide that's formed when reacting with water so this in the solubility of this increases down the group so um, magnesium hydroxide is used in me medicine as an antacid, as it is alkaline, and also in agriculture to neutralise soil. Then the solubility of sulphate, so this solubility decreases down the group 
Barium sulfate is useful in medicine as barium meals, um, which are a medical tracer, um, and it's not absorbed into the blood. So because, because of its um, lack of solubility, it doesn't get absorbed into the blood, which can be very toxic if that was to happen. Um, but luckily it doesn't. So uh, barium chloride is also used to test for sulfate ions. Then we have metal extraction. So magnesium is used in the extraction of titanium from titanium chloride via displacement reaction. And then you've got flue gas removal. So calcium oxide reacts with sulfur dioxide to remove it from factory pollutants and prevent it being released into the atmosphere, forming calcium sulfite and water. Then moving on to group seven halogens. So for this, again, we have a similar table to the group twos. So atomic radius increases down the group due to additional electron shells. Reactivity decreases down the group due to shielding. Ionization decreases down the group due to atomic radius and shielding. It's really important that you know the kind of reasonings why these trends happen, um, because it's you will be asked to explain why the reactivity goes down or something. Then boiling points. So group seven halogens have simple covalent are simple covalent molecules, aka they contain van der Waals forces. The bonds get stronger down the group with AR, so boiling point increases down the group. Oxidizing power. So good. So group seven halogens are a good oxidizing agent. Um, their oxidizing power decreases down the group as their ability to attract electrons decreases due to shielding and atomic radius. So chlorine is the most reactive. Then when it comes to being a reducing agent, halide ions are good reducing agents as they donate electrons to the species being reduced. This reducing power increases down the group as electrons are easier to lose from large ions related to shielding and atomic radius. So silver nitrate is used to test for halide ions and could be further tested using ammonia. So this is the little table on the right hand side. We've got chlor the chlorine ion, the bromine, and the iodine. Or, and then when add added to a silver nitrate, um, it forms so chlorine forms a white precipitate, bromine forms cream, and iodine forms yellow. And then sometimes these aren't always as obviously the colours are very different on the presentation, but sometimes the precipitates aren't necessarily easy to distinguish from each other in real life. So this is where you'd then want to test with ammonia, so either using dilute or concentrated. Um, chlorine, because it's the most reactive, will dissolve with dilute ammonia, but bromine then requires concentrated ammonia to dissolve. And if the, so the, if the precipitate doesn't dissolve in either of them, then you've got iodine. Chlorine reacts with cold water, so there's just another reaction there. So this is a disproportionation reaction as the chlorine is both oxidized and reduced. Then in the presence of UV light where chlorine is reduced, you can see the reaction there. Chlorine is used in small quantities to kill bacteria and water treatment processes, although chlorine can be toxic, hence why it's only used in very small quantities, like for example in the swimming pool. Um, chlorine can be mixed with cold aqueous sodium hydroxide to produce bleach as well. So chlorine is a very, very useful uh, halogen, it's a very useful substance. Then here are the group seven halogen tests. So anion tests, so you've got the same table as previous with the silver nitrate and the ammonia testing. But then when you're testing for a sulfate, um, so this is tested using barium chloride to form a white precipitate if the sulfate is present. Then for hydroxide, so the solution is alkaline, so it can be identified using red litmus, which turns blue, or universal indicator, which will turn blue-purple to indicate if hydroxide is present. And then for carbonate, so when an acid, such as hydrochloric acid, is added, the carbonate ions will fizz and CO2 gas is released. You can bubble this gas through lime water, and if the carbonate is present, then it will turn cloudy. Then you've got the cation test. So you, the main thing for this is flame test. So you've got calcium, um, Ca2 plus will produce like a brick red flame. Strontium will produce a red flame and barium will produce pale green. Then ammonium, um, ammonia gas is given off, which is a base. 
So hold red litmus paper over a petri dish of the substance being tested. And if it turns blue, then ammonium ions are present. So like I said, super quick presentation. So that is all for part one. Um, check, check out my channel for part two, which will be coming soon. And I shall speak to you all soon. And don't forget to subscribe, like the video and comment below if you have any questions at all.